So the big question is this, how do most agents who don't have access to the secrets that the top agents in our industry hoard to themselves grow and prosper in today's real estate environment? That's the question. And this video podcast is the answer. I'm Pat Hyben and welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. Rockstar Nation, thanks so much for listening. Don't forget to stay to the end where our guests will be offering a free gift. As you know, all of our guests offer a free gift and all of these gifts can be found on the Agent Success Toolbox. You could find that by going to hybendigital.com backslash toolbox or simply texting the word toolbox to 444 444- 999 that's toolbox to 444-999 i am going to put today's free gift in today's show notes but if you want all of them including gifts from most of our guests that have come on the show just go to the agent success toolbox welcome to real estate rock stars my name is adam roach i am your guest host today and do we have a fantastic, I mean, just incredible uh, interview today with Mr. Hans Struzina. You know, let me share something with you guys real quick. Here's an individual that has been in the business of real estate for only three years. He's doing just south of $20 million in sales. He's from the Bay Area and he's an Olympian. Hans, say hi to everybody. Hey, everybody. Hans Trezina here. Thank you for having me on. I'm real excited to be here. Good, man. Well, we're super excited to have you here as well. Hey, let's start off. Our audience and our our listeners love to hear what people's superpowers are. Why don't you share with us what your superpower is? Man, well, uh, like your intro implied back in my my rowing days, I would have said it's rowing boats real fast. (laughs) But now that I'm I'm out of that, that world, it's Uh, I've taken a lot of what I learned as an athlete and applied it. And so I think my number one superpower is to uh, learn quickly, retain what I'm learning and apply it immediately. And I've found that that has just been huge in the, in my trajectory of just my, my short career so far. Yeah. Awesome. So now you were in the 2016 Olympics, right? That's correct. In Rio de Janeiro. Rio de Janeiro. Did you get out and uh, shake it a little bit like those uh, dancers you see on TV? We, we had a few late nights out, uh, out watching some beach volleyball and some stuff, which is, by the way, an unbelievable experience in Rio because they, they go crazy for their beach volleyball there. Do they really? Oh, yeah. It's like a national pastime almost. It's unbelievable. That's, that's really, really cool. So, so hey, give us quickly a background on what it takes. What's, what's it take to be an Olympian? Well, it really just takes a lot of hard work and, a, and an ability to not quit, frankly, mm-hmm. and and for me, you know, well, I'll caveat that with saying you have to have some physical ability uh, to sort of marry with your, your hard work and your work ethic. But, but generally, if you've got sort of the skills or, or the physical features to compete, uh, once you kind of have that down and you find your niche or your sport, um, mm-hmm. it's, it's all about hard work, coachability, and trying to improve every day. Yeah, that's awesome. And clearly, that hard work has, has transitioned well now into the real estate world, only in the business for three years, doing just south of $20 million in sales. Man, let's get down to the nitty gritty. So, so how many houses have you sold in the last 12 months? What's the volume, gross commission, profit margins? Tell us all about your business. All right. So this, this last year was, was my best year to date by almost a 3x factor, um, but I've done 15 sides uh, 10 of those are from buyers, six are on the listing side. Mm-hmm. Volume right now is 19.13 million. Gross commissions was 188.980. Um, nice. I know that because I'm a numbers guy and I keep track of my spreadsheets and all that. And that's, mm-hmm. um, and, and for reference, I'm on a team. So I have obviously a team split and pay some TC fees and all that sort of thing. So that's the gross commission to me, not to the team. Gotcha. And then my personal profit margin is running right about 70% because I do have a higher split with the team, but they take care of a lot of that stuff for me. So I don't have to deal with, you know, some of the systems and the back office and all that. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So, so you know what I love about you is, is you already said you're a numbers guy. And I, as a, as a coach, also as a real estate coach, numbers literally are the language of business. Would you agree? 
hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, if you don't know your numbers, I mean, what, what the hell are you doing in the business world, right? You're just winging it. And you can't, if you can't measure it or if you're not measuring it and tracking it, you can't control it. Yeah. Very, very, very. Tell me more. What, what, What do you mean by that? Well, you know, taking that to either an athletic performance standpoint or a business standpoint, like if you are, are working really hard in the gym or, you know, making cold calls or holding open houses, but you're not tracking, you know, where your leads are coming from, what activities are producing, you know, closings or, you know, what your dollar per hour is on a cold call versus a in-person meeting, you know, and, and you're just doing stuff like, Mm-hmm. You will probably end up with results if you take enough action, but that action could be better used in a, in a way to really scale you. And so you're not running around with, the, with your head cut off all over the market trying to put a deal together over here and over there. And if you know uh, what's really moving the needle for you, you can actually double down on those activities and, and see results really uh, relatively quickly. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, it it's, sounds to me like you don't wing the business, do you? No. Well, I used to, to be totally honest, but I have started to get more serious about those numbers. And when I started to track it, it's when I started to, to notice trends and then I could uh, get really clear on, on ways to actually move the needle. Right, right. Yeah. And I hope our listeners hear that is, is what we just heard Hans say is l- paying attention and tracking your numbers will, will ultimately build predictability, right? It's absolutely. A, absolutely. And, I mean, just taking it to the gym, like if you know, if you're just going in and doing a couple lifts and you're checking Instagram and then you're like going, getting a drink of water, then you go over to another machine, like you're in the gym, that's fantastic, but you're not doing anything. Right. And if you go in with a plan of like, I'm going to do four sets of five reps at this weight, then I'm going to lift it up to this weight next week and this week, the week of after, you know, that's when you're going to start to see the results and you're going to look in the mirror and like what you're looking at. So the same thing goes for your business. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's funny going to the gym, a little bunny trail here. I've been doing, have you seen that new beach body workout called the work? I have not. Oh my gosh. This guy, I don't even remember the trainer's name. He's incredible. And, and, uh, they actually allow cussing on this beach body workout and it's, it it gets (laughs) you going. I'll tell you, there's nothing like 5 a.m. And someone's cussing you out. It's kind of fun. Okay, so let's go at, back to that. So you do track. I love that you track. Mm-hmm. What would you say is your number one source for listing leads other than your sphere of influence? So I mentioned earlier I'm on a team. And the team I'm on is the Gunderman Group. Uh, we're the number one team in the East Bay kind of a Oakland, Berkeley, Alameda, for those of you who are familiar with the Bay Area. And they've been in the business for over 20 years uh, each. And so we've got a huge database, a huge past client sphere. And for, uh, most of our listing uh, either comes from referrals from that. So to me, it's new business, but to them, it's repeat. And then uh, we have a very large Yelp presence. We actually almost have 200 almost 200 or we may have just cracked 200 reviews, which is the most uh, in our marketplace. So that gets us a lot. And then generally speaking, we just have a lot of signs in the ground at any one time. So a lot of calls just will come in straight off the signs from neighbors and, and uh, people who are driving around and seeing, seeing our presence. Right, right. So wait a minute. So you're telling me that sign calls still actually work? (laughs) <laughs> Believe it or not, people actually want to talk to one another when it comes to a big transaction. Shocking, well, I know, but, but yeah, that? it happens sometimes. Yeah, it does happen. <laughs> hey, let's go back to this Yelp review. I know reviews have been quite the rave for probably the last five, maybe six years. Uh, tell us about what the team focus is there. What, what, tell us about that. Well, everybody on our team has a bit of a different opinion ar- around sort of generally speaking, all the quote unquote typical sales stuff. So asking for reviews, asking for a referral, that sort of thing. But generally we have asked in a sort of non-pushy way uh, for for past clients, anyone who has worked with us to leave us a Yelp review because we're trying to build up that channel. And I came into the business uh, about a year and a half ago. By that, I mean the, the Gunderman group. And they they had, I don't know, 140, 150 Yelp reviews. And then we really, like I had all my clients leave reviews. Um, and then we really, as a group, made a push to continue to ask our clients just to build it up, tell about their experience, you know, write a specific story about us. And mm-hmm. that has just accumulated up to pushing on that 200 
uh, Mark. So it's really fairly organic in asking and the, and the request. And, and, and when you make that request, I always couple it with why, because I say, you know, it really helps me uh, gain clarity and feedback on what was important to you, but it also helps other people uh, make a good decision when it comes to hiring us versus somebody else. Right, right. So, so you're intentional and purposeful with that question. So they get it. So the, 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 uh, the client then has an action to go do, right? Right. Because if you ask someone to go leave a review, it's, I mean, think about how many times we get hit up by airlines and credit card companies. Mm -hmm. And anytime we're on the phone with anybody, stay on the line and and take our two minute satisfaction (laughs) survey. It's like, hell no, no one is doing that. Right. But, but if you tie it to a reason, it's, it's interesting. I, I, for the life of me, I don't remember the study, but they, there was a study that came out that said, even if it's a ridiculous reason, like, it's just, you know, I want to make copies because I, because I have to. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, people were like 80% more likely to let someone cut in line with this study. And, it, and so I just said, let's just tie it to a reason. It helps us grow our business, helps us gain feedback. And it's just amazing how when you, when you ask it in that way with any request, how people will actually take action when, they, when it's tied to a reason. Right. Love it. Love it. Try Tribeamillionaires.com. Guys, write that down. Rockstar Nation got a free special offer for you. Now, I've just written a book, and it's just been published. Co-authored it with David Osborne, who's been on this show multiple times. If you don't know David, he is one of the top execs at Keller Williams Real Estate. Was personally mentored for the last two decades by Gary Keller himself. And he's in all kinds of businesses. His bio and explanation and everything is in this book. But anyways, David and I got together. We decided to write a book. We called it Tribe of Millionaires. And I guarantee you, it's going to change your life. To find out more, just go to tribeofmillionaires.com. We're going to give it to you absolutely free. Only thing we ask in return is, of course, number one, you pay the shipping. Not a big deal. But number two, that you go on Amazon and write us a review. We're really looking to get an incredible amount of reviews. And because of that, we're giving this book away for free. Go to tribeofmillionaires.com today. So listeners, here's what I want you to hear there. Number one, it's a system, right? Number two, he is actually telling them or scripting what to do, when to do, and how to do it. And then thirdly, that these reviews are actually driving more leads uh, back to him and the team. Fantastic. Uh, let's go into the buyer side now. So tell, tell our listeners, what's your number one source for buyer leads? Right. In, in the beginning, it was just leads that would come in either through the open houses that I would hold for the team or from uh, sign calls or internet calls uh, through Zillow or for, through the listing website. And now it is starting to transition to referrals. So I am, I am quickly on my way to having a 50-50 ratio of, of referral business to you know, new kind of internet sign call business. Love it. Nice. Congratulations. Yeah, that's that's, uh, in my opinion, that's the number one as a real estate coach. That's your number one job is to build your database such as your database gives you nothing but referrals all day long, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, tell us, uh, tell me about your team philosophy. When you and I talked briefly before the podcast here, you talked about a philosophy of lean in, lean out. Tell, tell mm-hmm. our listeners what that means. Well, I wish I could take credit for that, but it it's definitely something that David and Andrew, my team leaders, have come up with and have preached, uh, I think, almost ever since they got in the business. But the concept is simple. It's, you know, people want to walk into an open house, in this case, um, and, and want to see the house. They don't want to, like, sign in. They don't want to be sold. They don't want to feel preyed upon. And so you literally have this moment when someone's walking in and you have a moment, you have a decision to like aggressively attack them and try and get them in your world. Or mm-hmm. you can literally take a step back, provide them some value and, and, you know, give away the, give away the information that, that some people like to hold back and just have them remember you as the person who was value first and then hopefully, and in practice, it actually works that uh, people come back to you, whether it's in that same open house, they'll circle back and ask for the card or, uh, or they'll call you a week or two later or what, whatever the case is. Right. So, so what I'm hearing you say there is you, you become a person of value. Is that right? That's correct. 
Right. Yeah. And, and it, again, what I'm hearing you say more there is when you become that value organically, they, they come back to you because the value is so great. You're the expert now, right? Absolutely. Love you it. know, I was talking to a lender who I, I do a fair amount of my buyers with, and he and I were talking over coffee yesterday about the uncommoditization of your, of your position. Like if you want to push paper, like there's an app that can push paper way better than you can. And if you're just kind of being, you know, you're just sending automated drips and you're saying, what do you want to write up on the offer? It's really probably not super valuable, but when you start to provide context and, you know, identifying landmines and like just being a person that listens, like that's when you start to become less commoditizable, if that's a word. Yeah. And, <laughs> and uh, that's when people start to, to start to find you attractive and they, they'll lean back towards you when, when you bring that thing, uh, bring that value first. Mm -hmm. Very interesting word there that you chose to use, listening. Hmm. Right. I, I think, yes. I, you know, and, and again, my, in my 20 years in the real estate world, man, there's so many agents out there. And I'll, I'll admit, I've been one too, where I'm that hiding behind the bush, kind of waiting to get you and say, oh, I got you, right? It's like a trap. And mm -hmm. there's no value in that. Mm -mm. The, 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 these people are humans just like you and I, and they want to feel the value. Awesome, yep. awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, let's do this. Uh, transition real quick. So with regards to those number one sources, what are you doing today that our listeners can do as well that would instantly increase their production? Well, I, I think with anything, regardless of where the lead comes from, if you're physically meeting someone in an open house, it's a call off of a sign, whatever. If you can put that person first, and mm -hmm. it, this, this is a little bit more of a mentality shift than sort of a, a script, but if you can think, how can I approach this person or help this person in this interaction to provide them some value that they couldn't get somewhere else. I, I believe that that will start to set you apart in a big way, um, especially as we go into this new uh, decade that we're, we're heading into in 2020. And an example of that is when anyone comes into one of my open houses, I, don't have a, I do have a sign-in sheet. I don't push it. It's, it's usually back farther in the open house, like on the kitchen table or something. And I, I always greet them towards the front of the house at the front door Shit, mm -hmm. you know, introduce myself, shake hands and say, can I tell you a little bit about the house or what you're about to walk into? And I've never had anybody say no. And mm -hmm. so I get, you know, about 20 to 30 seconds to say, okay, the, the basement is really uh, unfinished, but it's a great place for an ADU. Go, go down those stairs. Um, the owner's suite is through this way. You've got to check the view out. And, you know, the backyard is not to be missed, but it's easy to, to miss. Just make sure you keep going past that, that door or, you know, something basic, whatever's appropriate for that house. Mm -hmm. And then I've always finished, like, if you have questions, uh, I'm going to be hanging out right here. And it, sort of engages people in an interesting way because most people when they walk into an open house are greeted and say with something like you know uh, do you have any questions can i help you you know some like the answer is always no to that right, right. so i want to engage someone in in some other way that provides value of something that they probably would have missed or could have missed or wouldn't have known in the first place because that already separates you because you think about how many open houses people see in a day probably right. five or six mm -hmm. and they, they all blur together. We all know that. And uh, if you can just separate yourself just a little bit, like you're going to stand out and it, it, the very minimum, you're going to represent that house in a better way. Well, and again, I think you said it maybe five or six minutes ago about being valuable, right? Being valuable and being human. I can't tell you how many homes from coast to coast I've gone into where the agent literally sat at the kitchen table and said, welcome to the open house. I'll be here if you have any questions. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on. I, even, even, even as a potential buyer, I'm probably not going to want to work with that guy because he's just, or female, just sitting there, right? So good for you to get to the front door. So basically what we heard you say there, listeners, is get off your tuchus, get up there, go introduce yourself when someone's walking in the front door, be a human and uh, be a point of value. Awesome. Yeah. That's really, absolutely, really cool. Absolutely. So, so, so what, what team systems are you most excited about for uh, either 2020 or just in general? This is one that I, I think is so funny because I think you hear this story all the time and I, and I certainly heard it before I joined this team, but you know, you hear about some of these top producers who have all this business and then you get 
into their team and, and you're assuming it's like this machine that just churns and it's just awesome. But like half the time it's not. And it's like, it's, there's a lot of greatness under there, but it's not like there's a system in play. And mm-hmm. this, and this one system that we were lacking was simply just a way to uh, stay engaged with our sphere and our past clients. And so what I'm really excited about in 2020 is simply just staying in touch with the people that uh, we as a group have done business with over the last 20 years and doing it in a way that's thoughtful and engaging both on social media, you know, an email drip campaign, and then, and then something simple like having some client appreciation events of some kind in 2020. And like those three really basic items, I think are just going to move the needle in a big way for us uh, here in the next year and beyond. That's cool. Really, really cool. Let, let's, let's go to what lead system or lead producing system are you most excited about? You know, I've, I've tried a handful of things. Um, we, we work with home light is one of the things that we have. It's as opposed to paying per lead, uh, you have a 25% referral on the back end of those, those, uh, those leads. Mm-hmm. We've had some success with them, but you know, and I've tried a handful of other lead providers. The thing that I'm actually really excited about, frankly, is open houses. My, my team leaders are, are listing machines Mm -hmm. and they, I think we have over 30 in the pipeline coming up in Q1 this year, which is just insane. But going in and and, and being able to actually build a human connection with people in a way that differentiates you. Like I, I am a personal believer in the fact that I want it like when I call a bank or I call a credit card company or any, an airline, I want to talk to, I press zero immediately. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe that a lot of other people want that too. And bringing that humanity back into this transaction, which most people like moving and selling and buying and filling out loan paperwork. Most people rank that somewhere close to getting a root canal of like things they want to do. (laughs) And so I'm of the opinion that if you can bring the humanity back into this, interaction and this engagement, you will, I, you will stand out in a totally different way. And that's why the open house for me is, is something that I'm really excited about this coming year. Love it. Do Do the math. It's worth every single dollar. That's a title of a comment that I got on my certified listing agent course from Rebus University. It's from Bill Reig. This is what Bill says. Bill says, looking to take your listing presentation to the next level? I've closed 100 appointments since I took Pat's certified listing agent course. Five appointments, five new clients, 60 days. Boom. Do the math. It's worth every single dollar. Thanks, Bill. But listen, guys, I am offering this to you if you haven't already taken it because so many brokers and teams make their agents take it before they do a single listing appointment. But if you haven't taken it, you can go to rebusuniversity.com and get it now. Now, here's the thing. For 30 days, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you that course. I'm going to give you the buyer agent course, which teaches you how to close every single series buyer that calls on the phone or emails. The certified team agent course is taught by Jeff Cohn, one of America's top agents on how to build a team from zero to hero to hundreds and hundreds of units every year, step by step. It's like a 12 hour course plus seven other courses. Yes, you heard that right. All for a measly 127 bucks a month. If you were to go to Rebus University and buy these courses individually, it costs you over $10,000. But today, if you go to futureofrealestatetraining.com, that's futureofrealestatetraining.com, you'll learn what Bill Reek did, which is how to close 100% of the listing points you go on. Quite impressive. And you'll learn all the other incredible details provided in the 11 five-star courses that are offered. Yeah, it's like all you can eat bizarre. You go in now and you pay 127 bucks a month. If you can eat all 11 courses in one month, that's all you pay is a buck 97. This is a bargain, guys. Get it now. Futureofrealestatetraining.com. Hey, real estate rock stars. This is Pat Hyben. And before we jump back into today's content, I want to tell you about an extraordinary offer from an extraordinary company. I'm talking about my Outdesk. If you haven't heard of my Outdesk, basically they are a virtual assistant company. 
a VA company that specializes in virtual assistants for real estate agents. Yeah, I'm talking about transaction coordinators, marketing assistants. I'm talking about ISAs, inside sales agents that prospect thousands and thousands of seller leads and buyer lead follow-ups. I mean, these guys are trained in this stuff specifically. You're not using a company that doesn't know or understand real estate sales. Four out of five of the top teams in the U.S. use my Outdesk for their virtual assistants. And because I know the owner, Daniel Ramsey, I've known him for over a decade, and I know how awesome and incredible this company is and how it saves agents thousands and thousands of dollars every single week and makes them thousands and thousands of more every single week. We are going to give you a $400 coupon off of your first month of a virtual assistant and give you a free book entitled Scaling Your Business with Virtual Professionals. So you can like read it and look into it before you decide anything. It's called Scaling Your Business with Virtual Professionals. And you can get it real easy. All you got to do is text the word HIBAN, H-I-B-A-N, to 31996. That's H-I-B-A-N to 31996. And download your free book, Scaling Your Business with Virtual Professionals. And don't forget to mention also that you get a $400 discount, which will give you a coupon for that when you download the book. Thank you, guys. And I hope you enjoy and make a ton of money using my Outdesk. Clearly, you are a very people forward person, and I, I love that. That's fantastic. Okay, let's pause on all of that and let's get into some real, let's get, let's get kind of down and dirty here as it relates to where have you failed, right? So, the question is what failure have you had that you look at today and, and, and having the success that you're having now? What, what failure have you had that when you look at it today as a successful agent was a, an incredible learning experience. And that can be as an Olympian in your trainings, as, as a business person, where have you failed, man? Yeah, I've got, I've got two, one's sports and one's real estate related. Um, the, the sports one is the Olympics, the, the actual A final, uh, which happened right in the middle of the Olympics. We, we made the A final, uh, sitting on the starting line, you know, gun goes off, races. Wait, wait, wait. The, the A final, that's like the, the last race, right? This is the Olympic race. Or the, yeah, the, the this, medal this race. is the, the medal round, baby. Ooh, okay. <laughs> now, where are, you, where are you sitting on the boat? Or are, I'm, are they... in, I'm in two seats. So when you look at a boat, yep. um, it's got the bow, obviously, is the front, and then the stern's the back, but the rowers are facing opposite. Uh, so the rowers are facing the back of the boat or the stern, and I'm okay. sitting in the second seat from the bow. So okay, you gotcha. count bow or one seat, and then you go up as you go to the back of the boat. Okay, gotcha. Okay. And Good so way. we ended up finishing fourth, which is obviously right outside the medals. It was a second or two to third and second. Like it was a relatively tight race, as you can imagine an Olympic race may be. But you know, it was a real disappointment for us. And I mean, we did we certainly didn't have our best race and we were certainly capable of of standing on the podium that day. But we mm -hmm. in the in those moments of like finishing, taking the boat to the dock, putting it away, all that stuff, it's like four years plus of training for that and I just failed. You know? And like, So now hold on, hold on. Can, can we just pause just for one second? Okay. So, and, and I clearly, you're extremely competitive. So gang, what we all just heard Hans say is he got fourth place, which meant he was the fourth best in the entire world. And he said he failed. Come on, man. I, I don't think you failed there, but I can totally appreciate where you're coming from. When you, when you go somewhere to achieve a goal and come home with hardware, like anything other than that is, yeah. is not a success. And, you know, in retrospect, I have worked through a lot of that and understood from sort of a psychological standpoint what, like, why I felt that way. And I, and I, you know, to round the story out, like, I got, I tried to have fun at the party because it's basically a party once you're done rowing or competing in the first week and it's all access to everything with your athlete badge. Mm -hmm. But I really was having a hard time enjoying it. 
And I got home and it took me well over a year to really sort of come to terms. With, I, I didn't watch the, the race for shoot over almost a, a full year after it happened. And even then I had to stop it a couple of times in the middle because it was, it just hurt mm. um, to watch. And uh, I finally got through the race. I've only watched it once since, since the final happened. And, but that was, that took a lot to get there mm-hmm. and just untangling my my self-worth and my my person you know my personal feelings about rowing and what it meant and who I was and was I a failure or success and all that stuff like we get so tied up or and and entangle our uh our identities with what it is we're doing and we take we forget like you know you're you aren't what you do like you are much much more than that and I'm sure we could dig into that conversation on a whole different yeah, episode totally. but you want what you do that's incredible yeah but but yeah it's it really it was really not an easy process and it's certainly having gone through it i have an i have a very different olympic story to tell as a result of it and i'm mm-hmm. glad i i i mean i wish i would we would have won the medal certainly but you know it was a one of those moments that really made me decide like okay i'm 27 when i finished that race what am I going to let this define the next, you know, 80 years of my life? Like, uh, no. Mm-hmm. And, and ultimately, you know, that has led me to, to climb this new mountain of real estate and, and sort of adjust my mindset around, around success and failure. That's badass, man. What, what an incredible story. If I could give you a, a virtual high five or a fist bump through the, uh, through the computer, I definitely would. I got so, you. So, so, so you, what I heard you say was, you were fourth best in the world. You didn't get hardware. It took you a while to figure out that that was not a defining moment. That moment was not going to define Hans going forward. It was a hell of an experience. Not many people, if, if hardly any, many people, get to experience what you did. You took away what you wanted to take away. It didn't define you, and now you're going to go kick ass in real estate. Is that right? More or less, and that's a, that's a grossly oversimplified you know, version of the, of the process I went through, but yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, if someone wants to ask me about that process, I'm happy to talk about that off air and, you know, I'm sure I'll, you'll throw my stuff in the show notes so we can connect that way. But man, it was, yeah. I mean, when you get so entrenched in that one little sliver of life, and for me, it was rowing, rowing a little skinny boat as fast as possible. And, uh, and you sometimes forget that like, there's a world out there. And mm-hmm. I, I, one of my, um, one thing I didn't mention is I was trying out for the 2012 team, which, which competed in London and I was cut from that team. And one of the other guys who was cut, who had been, who was an older guy who had been on the, um, the circuit for a while. He said, you know, whether you make it or you don't like your friends and your family will still love you and beer will still taste good. And it was, sort of like a joke at the time like oh yeah it's okay if you get cut don't worry about it but like you know it's true like (laughs) getting tied up in your identity around how much real estate you sell or how fast you can row a boat like you know you are more than those results and and coming to terms with that and really sort of internalizing that was was a something that came out of that fourth place finish that i'm really glad i i was able to uh, internalize and come to grips with Man, what an incredible story. That's, that's awesome. I'd love to keep going deeper into that, but whew, we got we to keep moving on. But Hans, thank you for sharing that. Thank you for getting authentic and real, man. That was awesome. Yeah, absolutely. That was really, really cool. So let's do this. What advice would you give yourself now, three years into this world of real estate, what advice would you give yourself, uh, Mr. Rookie Agent? Going back well, three years, what advice would you give your rookie agent self? When I first started in the business, uh, I was just cold calling. Uh, so we had lists of distressed property owners and, and basically people who either had equity but had a notice of default or had to do something on that front or were upside down and they could, have, could do a short sale. So that's how I started. And I cut my teeth on, on those kinds of transactions. And I'm really glad I did that. But I would say um, I've got sort of two ideas. One is that like if you can get out there and just play a numbers game in some way and, and you're comfortable knocking on doors and you can learn how to cold call and get a coach or get a, get a mentor who can teach you that, like the, the numbers game will just be in your favor. It just will. Mm-hmm. And, and there's, 
you know, before you get good, you have to get consistent. And that is a great way to do it, even though it's painful and it's kind of, it sucks. But, you know, another one, another thing you could do on top of that, or in addition to that is spend time going out on tour and, and going through houses every single day, uh, going and meeting the listing agents when they're holding their, their listings open, building relationships with those people, but also going through taking notes on all the properties, looking at the comps and starting to post uh, either on a blog you create or just on your Facebook you know, what was the best deal you saw that day? You know, if you want to target investors, go into bigger pockets and post that. Like, here's the house. Here's why it's a good deal. Here's, here's the neighborhood demographic and the neighbor and blah, blah, blah. Or, you know, here's why this house is like the best value on the block. You know, start mm-hmm. creating content around that. People will start to notice if you do it consistently and, and start to call you or start to, you know, engage with you on it. But then also it'll just step you up in a way that, you know, your skills will skyrocket because you're analyzing, you know, four or five properties a day. Yeah, man, that is awesome. I'm sitting here taking notes. That's, that's awesome. I love what you just said there. Before you get good, get consistent. That's strong. That's real. Yeah. real cool. And I can't lay claim to that one either. That's a Grant Cardone one, but I, I, know, I heard but that, that early, early on in my sort of sales life and it's resonated and it's totally, totally true. Mm-hmm. Man, that's awesome. So let's do this. If you had a magic pill, right? A magic pill and could remove one source of pain from your business, what would it be? Man, Right at this exact moment, it's contractors and handy people who are working on listings we're prepping. Because as I told you before we started recording, I just got off of a a very frustrating situation where this contractor uh, upped the the price on us by about $2,000 without Mm -hmm. any knowledge. So I would like to change that. But generally speaking, it's email. Like with title and escrow and lenders and the clients and, you know, the inspectors and all the people like this emails just get so deep and there's so many signature lines and you can't tell which one was which. And uh, if, if we could all get off of email and start (laughs) and figure out a better platform to communicate, I would really love to do that. (laughs) Yeah. Wouldn't that be nice? Oh my gosh. Email. Really cool, man. That's, 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 that's fun there. So last question here. So what's one piece of advice you would give the listeners here to drastically increase their sale or sales for 2020? I've got a bit of an interesting take on this. I I also invest in real estate and I I buy rental properties out of state because in California, I don't find any, it's not my model. I don't, I don't, the rent control, the low cap rate, it's like, it just doesn't make sense for what I'm trying to accomplish right now. So I invest in real estate, but the cash flow from those is obviously income that you can use and earn. And I believe that if you can generate income from some investment that you make that is sort of offsetting some of your living costs, it will take the pressure off of you as you're starting to gear up and to build up so that you don't have the commission breath when you're talking to somebody in an open house and you can actually take a second provide value to them and really do it the right way as opposed to worrying about where your next commission check is coming from. Because if, because approaching people, whether it's a listing or a a buyer in that manner will turn them off. But on conversely, if you can bring that value, it'll, it'll bring them to you. That's awesome, man. That's really, really good advice there. So here we go, gang. So Hans, this has been incredible. You've brought immense value, your story, from your Olympics was incredible. Everybody, this is Hans Trezina. Uh, he is not a former Olympian. He is an actual Olympian. He corrected me when we were talking earlier. There's no such thing as a former Olympian. He's a badass Olympian and an incredible real estate agent in the Bay Area. So if you guys ever have referrals that you want to send to the Bay Area, you better look up Hans. He is the man. So Hans, any closing words you want to say here before we go? Yeah, and I the the only other thing I would say is find a mentor, find someone who's been there before you, and get into their world. I did that with um, both my first and my second team, and I I was a sponge. I learned as much as I could, provide as much value as I could, and even though the split wasn't the highest, I made up for it in volume and in education. And I I will tell you that is beyond worth it if you can speed up your trajectory in this industry. That's awesome. That's badass. Well, everybody, this has been. 
Real Estate Rock Stars, we look forward to uh, hearing your feedback. Give us feedback, whether it's positive, whether it's negative, just give us some feedback. We love it, and we will see you guys, hear from you guys, and well, whatever you guys want to hear, why don't you just tell us what you want to hear, and we'll bring it to this podcast. Take care. See you, everybody. I want you to think about the word toolbox. What is a toolbox? A toolbox is a box full of tools that you use to build something great. At Real Estate Rockstars, we've created our own free toolbox. So everybody that comes on the show as a guest brings a tool with them and we plow them all into this toolbox and we give it away for our viewing audience to basically use as they wish. Everything we put in there is an actionable item that can be downloaded, can be printed, can be used immediately. And we got things like scripts and dialogues, checklists for teams, checklists to keep agents accountable, referral forms that are filled out at settlement to get referrals by your buyers and sellers. Everything you could think of that you could use on a regular basis about real estate is included in this toolbox. And it's helping agents worldwide sell more houses and make their jobs a lot easier and processes much more efficient. And the thing is, it's absolutely free. All you gotta do is go to hypendigital.com backslash toolbox or text the word toolbox to 444-999. That's toolbox 444-999. Do it now. Rockstar Nation, thank you for listening to Real Estate Rockstars. Listen, I need a favor. If you find this free content helpful, if you find our downloadable items from each guest helpful, please, I need you to pull out your pointing finger. Yes, the one finger that points at people and hit subscribe. Yes, subscribe. The more subscribers we get, the better we look in the ratings and the easier it is to get guests like Robert Kiyosaki, Barbara Corcoran, all the players that are on million dollar listing in the different cities. All that stuff makes it easier the more subscribers we get. So please subscribe. And listen, there's a lot of places you can leave comments. There's a lot of places you can like. We're on Facebook. We have an Instagram page. Instagram page is I am Pat Hyben. The Facebook is Real Estate Rockstars Radio. Feel free to leave us comments there. The most popular form of commenting seems to happen on YouTube. Yes, for whatever reason, it's a a very open environment. So just go to YouTube and go to Real Estate Rockstars Radio. Leave us comments there. Some of them we will read on the show. We love your feedback. So thanks, guys, and I hope you are having a great day. Oh, and also, listen, if you're going to subscribe and you haven't already left a review on iTunes, please do that too. Have a great day and thanks so much, Rockstar Nation. I really appreciate you.